so wonderful to have all of you here. Thank you for this great honor. Thank you and God bless you. Well, I, I think the rest of the people will join us as we continue because um, we have quite some things to talk about and um, time is not uh, it's not that much that we are going to use to do this hmm. well let's pray our Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. Thank you for your love. Thank you for you saw our need, but you, you still went beyond our faults and came for us. Thank you so much for loving us. Thank you for even this season that people are celebrating and talking about love. We ask that you will speak to our hearts. Speak to us, Lord, expressly. Let it be simple and yet let it be lasting. Life transforming, let it shape our destiny. Let it shape our relationship. We give you praise. We give you thanks in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Yeah. Well, 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 you're welcome to AHA Moment, the Valentine special. Um, I believe that God is going to say something to us, those of us that are already here, and those that will watch this later on. I believe that God will say something to all of us. Well, the topic we are looking at today is could a loving and a lasting marriage be a matter of luck or is there something else is there any recipe is there any any guideline is there something that is expected of us are we supposed to make any contribution or we put everything on God so that he will do it for us I know that there are people who carry that uh, mindset into everything um, I pray that they don't carry that into the labor room you know when they say, okay, God gave me the baby, he should come and push. Because we have our own part to play. Um, without wanting to just give a blanketed uh, answer to the big question that we are looking at today, we are going to just take a look at some some passages I consider very needful and that will be helpful for us. <clears throat> so the big question is, could this thing about happy and lasting marriage be a thing of luck? Um, one of the things that could make you cry is when people are telling stories about um, what they have been through in the relationships. Um, fortunately, many of these people who share their stories were not the ones that initiated them. They are people who are just, um, they are, should I call them victims? They, they were just born into trouble. 
Let's put it that way. One of the accounts, the footage that I watched today is a woman who has been looking for the father to the son. And uh, when she was sharing her story, it looks like she was just looking for who to blame. At a point, she wanted to take the responsibility. She said, um, well, I, 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 I know I must have made a mistake. Then she came back and said, no, I was just living life. I, I was just enjoying myself. No, just living my life. After she told all her story, the man had to testify. And this is in the court. And the man said, well, when the judge asked, how did you people meet? that you just vanished, you didn't want to know about your son. The man said, well, this is how we met. We just joined the bus together. And I was just in front when this woman gave a note to her own son to bring it to me. And what was on the note? It was her own phone number. She gave a phone number that the man should contact her. They've never met for the first, I mean, they've never met before. That was the first time of their having a chance to see each other. So when the man turned his eyes or turned his face and looked behind, each of them liked the face they saw. And that was the beginning of a relationship that produced the young man that she was looking for the father. So many years passed, as I'm talking, the young man was already a father of three. Himself was feeling like he came from nowhere because he had never known who the father was. Until finally, you know, this thing they call DNA tests. All the arguments were led to rest. Finally found out that was the father. And uh, why am I bringing that story? That story, I think, is needful because today um, some people are going to repeat that same mistake or something similar to that. Where they build everything that they expect to stand on rubbish. They start a relationship that they expect to be an edifice but they started as though they are building tents using my wife's expression if you want to build an edifice then you take time to lay the foundation and don't just put pegs don't just stretch a, a, a tent and then peg the, the tent expect it to last or be something similar to an edifice so I'm here to share some thoughts with you. Um, so how do we know whom we should consider as um, a possible candidate or a possible uh, or potential spouse, man or woman? Who should we or what are the qualities that we should look for? I want to clearly say, yeah, you can say it's a matter of luck. Yeah, it's as good as saying that becoming an engineer, a successful engineer, is a matter of luck. It's as good as saying that becoming a doctor is a matter of luck. It's uh, saying that in any profession, any career, that you become successful because you were lucky. Um, you could say that. But let's put it this way, that if you prepare, if you have the right preparation and then opportunity comes your way, you are lucky. But not the luck in terms of, oh, it just happened. Because I have had so many stories, I've watched many footages to see how human beings can drive themselves crazy. Because we are sick. We want to find independence of God. So we threw away both our maker 
and the blueprint for life. So that same craze and the desire, the inner longing to be in control of everything is what is destroying many lives. We don't find out from God, what is your will for me? We threw everything, everything to the wind, you know, when it has to do with these are the instructions of life. We don't want to listen. We want to do it on our, our own way. Unfortunately, many people will turn around to us. But where was God when this started happening? As if you bothered to find out, Lord, this thing I want to do, do you approve of it? Should I ever start it? But we wait until when we get to the high seas and then the engine ceases, the storm is on, and you're beginning to see some wild, you know, sea animals showing up. <laughs> That's when some people begin to say, but where was God <laughs> in all of this? God has always been there as God. God is not intimidated by anybody. You cannot blackmail God. You cannot make him do what he doesn't want to do. He is God forever. He doesn't need any of us to vote for him. So tonight, I believe that this brief moment is going to help us so that for those of us who have already met the blunder, you could um, make some amends. You, you, could, you could seek God to, and ask him to help you. And he's ever ready. You see, the only person that God, God resists, sorry about that, the only person God resists is a proud. And the proud person wouldn't want to pray. The proud person would not tell you, I'm sorry. If a proud person tells you, I'm sorry, is, is going to counter it. For instance, said that thing you did, um, I felt bad about it. Said, I'm sorry, I didn't know such a thing would make you feel bad. Now, why well, you didn't need to say you are sorry if you were going to counter it? You are countering it because you didn't need to make that comment. We are trying to say, and we are saying, that a happy and lasting marriage is not an accident. Incidentally, many people who claim to be believers today are having problems. Problems, some of which you don't find with those who don't read the Bible. Unfortunately, reason. Many claim to walk by faith, and that faith is only when it's suitable to their desires and their longing and their lust. So they call it faith. Now, Bible says without love, faith cannot work, because faith works by love. Thank you, Bishop, sir. Happy to have you here. The Lord bless you. So you cannot claim to live by faith and you don't care about what you're doing, how it's affecting the other person. You cannot claim to be living by faith and you are insensitive to others and to your environment. You cannot claim to live by faith and it's all about you and you are in a relationship. As a matter of fact, you don't even care whether God has a thing to say about what you are doing or not. You just wake up and do what you want to do. That cannot be faith. I found out that the people of faith are very disciplined people. You cannot be a man or woman of faith if you are not disciplined. If you do not submit yourself and take on the lifestyle of discipline, you see, you will be doing things the way you like. Now, this is what I found out. You may agree or you may want to take out some time to find this out. 
Many times, you know, some people don't just want to get up to sin against God. But many times they end up sinning against God because they want to do what they want to do. Let me tell you that again. Many people do the things that end up becoming sin because they want to please themselves. And that's what the Bible talked about. Paul, writing to Timothy, said, In the last days, human beings will be lovers of themselves more than lovers of God. And because human beings perpetually seek to please themselves and not God who met them, they end up doing things that God is not, uh, doesn't approve of because they want to please themselves. The person who steals another person's thing, what is that? Seeking to please himself or herself. The person who is taking the other person for a ride, seeking to please himself, most likely himself or herself. The woman who is all out to control the husband, what is she doing? She is seeking to please herself. Does it ever matter to her if God approves of that? She doesn't even think that of that. In fact, she is only she might only look for God to come and be like um, uh, that. God should just be like a talisman. Come and solve my problem, and then I go back and live the way I like to live. Marriage for your marriage to be happy, for your marriage to be lasting, for your marriage to be successful. You have to observe some rules, some principles. There are some laws that are written. There are some laws that are unwritten. And it is your place to ask God for the wisdom. To know how to deal with others. But the basic thing you need to know is if you are the kind of person who takes decision. And you don't care what will be the consequence of that. You don't care how that is going to affect your spouse. You don't care how it's going to affect your, your, your family as a whole. If you're a self-willed person, you may think that you are having a marriage. You can live with someone in the... So, somebody is living with you or you live with someone and the person was gone. And many times people stick around. They stay because... They are afraid of what the society will say. Now, when you get to a you know, a, a, a metropolitan society like the one we are living in, uh, you might not even know your next door neighbor for the next two years. Or you sometimes you can live together for years. Everyone is just minding his own business. You need to break the barriers to be able to reach out to others. Now, in this kind of society, people just feel you can do anything you want to do. Nobody knows you that closely. So you can take steps, do the thing, can live here and be living a double standard life. You know, people think they know you, but they don't know you. You are saying one thing to this one. I mean, you can think, you, you may think that polygamy is just an African thing. It's not. Polygamy is not an African thing. Polygamy is just there in the male man and it can so take root and one of the things that my brother taught me many years ago and God has used that to help me is that when you are energy, when you are strength is not surrendered unto God, you do not use that to serve God. You are going to channel it towards something. You are going to get into some form of addiction. If you do not use your strength, your energy to serve God, you are going to use it to serve yourself. And guess what? Many times we end up destroying ourselves with that. Why do you think that Joseph, as far back as Genesis, could see Sleeping with another man's wife as something evil, as it will not please God. Why did he bring God in 
he said he called it great wickedness how can i do this great wickedness and sin against my god i tell you why many people even those who are who are teaching others the ways of god are living the way they are living is that they have not met god to be part of their daily living they have not allowed god to take his rightful place in their marriage they've not surrendered the lordship of their family to god instead what is happening is the woman seeks to control the man the man seeks to dominate the woman now let me tell you if that's how you are living that is i think that that is the number one punishment that man has taken upon himself let me say that again when you refuse to allow god to be the lord and you do not submit surrender the lordship of your personal life first and the lordship of your marriage both people will try to be in control often the woman wants to control the man using all kinds of styles manipulation you know outright rebellion and all that and then the man also wants to use his macho to be controlling and dominating he wants to use force the man wants to force the wife to do it and the worst is when you do it in the name of god and you quote the bible to control your spouse quote the bible to dominate your spouse I'm yet to find a place that that is clearly saying that. But you see, where the Bible says, because you have done this, said to Adam and Eve, it said to Eve, because you have done this, your desire shall be unto your husband. Read it and study it from the original Hebrew. You will discover that that word, your desire shall be unto your husband, was or is rightfully supposed to be you will be seeking to control your husband so it came as a result of god's anger it's not a blessing not in any way and said to the man you will be ruling over in other words you'll be dominating you'll be seeking to dominate why they did not enthrone God, did not allow God to be the king in that marriage, the king in that family. Everywhere where people have refused to allow God to be the Lord, be it at home, be it in your marriage, be it in your family, you have refused to give God his place. And you want to take what is supposed to be God's to do it by yourself. That is the punishment itself. Oh, we were speaking, about, we were talking with my wife. Uh, and then uh, I said, some people will say, oh, God wouldn't say that. Now, check it again. Check it again. When God has warned and warned and warned and warned, a time comes when he pronounces judgment. So, it's not the kind of love that people say, oh, if you really love me, you shouldn't, control, shouldn't correct me. There's nothing like that with God. If God loves you, he will correct you. And if he corrects you, after a while, he notices that you are not ready to bend, you are not ready to comply. He now pronounces his judgment. Judgment day is coming for this world. <laughs> Don't be fooled about it. You know, some people that were making all the noise, oh, there's no God. Some of them are no more living today. Because they refuse the counsel of God. It looks like I'm completely, completely going off what I wrote down. Now, let, let's see this. One of the things you shouldn't do. If you want to enter. I know quite some people here are already married. But if you are not yet married. Blessed art thou for listening to this. Thou art so blessed. To hear this before you decide and that is watch out for the indicators 
one clear indicator of what somebody carries in the heart is what comes out of the person's mouth. Their words are fruits. The content of the heart are seeds. All right. Let me see how I can. Uh, let's read that. Let's read that. Okay, it's in Matthew, the book of Matthew, chapter twelve. It's good for us for us to read that Matthew chapter twelve from verse thirty three to verse thirty seven. You know, many times people try to mix up things and they call they call relationship a matter of the heart but what they are actually talking about they are talking about their emotions i know that even the economy runs on human emotions but when you want to take a major decision in your life you don't treat it as something that is easy can be trivialized, can treat it anyhow. No, you need to pay attention. Think of what it's going to cost you. I know that nowadays many people, even church folks, some don't even consider that this is a lifelong thing. But what they have in their head is my marriage will last. But what they believe in their heart is based on the lifestyle that will never allow marriage to last. And when the conflict between what is in their heart comes against what is in their head, what's in their head is that, oh, God wants your marriage to succeed. Oh, it's not a good thing to divorce. That's in their head. They have read it in their Bible, and so what? It has not entered the heart yet. What is in their heart? Like I asked a young lady some time ago, this, this marriage that you are pushing yourself into, you are, you, are, you are talking about how this man is not responding well. He's not even treating the mother well. What do you think will make him to love you the way he should if he maltreats the mother? If he can, as an accountant, he cannot buy a comfortable bed for the mother to sleep on. The mother was sleeping on the plank. What makes you think this man will change? Is it because he will get married to you? I said, and then when she started talking about, oh, he's a very godly person. I said, what makes you think so? Because he attends church? No. No. By their fruit you shall know them. Now let me read us this Bible passage. Matthew chapter 12 verse 33 to 37. Now pay attention to this. Either make the tree good, and its fruit good. For the tree is known by its fruit. Now there is, is going to be a switch somewhere. You brood of vipers. He is speaking to the religious leaders of his time. See how hard Jesus used to be with the religious leaders. People who claim to be defending or defending protecting or presenting the name of God to others, but they don't even believe in what they are talking about. They read from what they believe others should know, but in their heart, that's not what they believe. How can you being evil speak what is good? For the mouth speaks out of what, of that which will, which fills the heart. Let me take that again. For the mouth speaks out of that which fills the heart. So if somebody, when you are relaxed, the person is saying the beliefs of the heart, and you treat it as nothing, begin to understand that you are in trouble already. And that's why I advise young people, when you want to get married, don't jump to tell the person, I want to marry you. I love you so much. Will you marry me? <laughs> Take your time and observe. Observe. Is this the kind of spirit you would like to live with? 
Is this the attitude you would like to live with the rest of your life? <laughs> People don't change like that. <laughs> People don't change because they have married you, no? <laughs> you know, you, you listen to some stories that will tell you, oh, the first two years were wonderful, amazing. You know how people talk, and they say it was awesome. Now, for me, <laughs> when you say awesome, my mind quickly goes to God. Now, you ask them, so what's happening now? They said, no, it's not been good. He's been trying to dominate me. He's been trying to tell me what to do. And the man will come. He's been, she's been trying to control me. She lies. She does this. Now, the first two years they are talking about, ask them, what are the things you used to do then? How did you used to regard and treat each other? Are you still doing them? You see, we carry this mindset of, I'm going to act for some time and I don't do anything with my heart. I believe that the rest will just run. <laughs> you know, it doesn't work like that. If you are not married, talk with those who are married. That's not how it works. If you are already in, if you are already in, you are married. The, the number of years will not change what's in your heart. If you do not do something about your heart, I'm sorry, you are, you are likely going to be one of the unlucky ones. The unlucky ones are the ones who did not prepare or have entered into it and don't want to take any, any counsel. They don't want anybody to help them. They want to do what they want to do. They are the unlucky ones. You can easily predict. Those who are made up and will not allow God to help them. If you are made up, it will be difficult for God to make you. I heard a wise person say that some years ago. And I can't forget it. If you are already so set in your ways, it will be difficult for God to correct you it will be near impossible for God to help you. Why? Jesus saw that man by the pool called Bethesda and he said to him, do you want to be made whole? I'm using my paraphrase. Are you willing to be made whole? So it will take your willingness. It will take you making yourself available. It will take you humbling yourself. You see, when you admit I don't know what to do. The reward of that is it should bring you to a place where you humble yourself. I'm saying reward because out of that, that understanding, I don't know what to do. And you allow somebody who knows to show you, you are already more than half the way to overcoming your problem. But if you think because, um, I have counted 75 years. Then I will tell you, so what happened to Abraham before he had the call of God? Did his age make up for what he did not know? No, that's the answer. But you see, from that time, as soon as he answered the call and walked the way God was directing, his life changed. Just the next chapter after he responded to the call, things began to change. So why didn't things change when he was lost in the midst of his people? When he did not hear the voice of God? When he didn't know what he was supposed to do with his life? And he was just there. Stop. So Bible says in this place, let me read verse 35. The good man out of the good treasure brings forth what is good. And the evil man Out of his evil treasure brings forth what is evil. And I say to you that every careless words, take note of this, that men shall speak, they shall render account for it in the day of judgment. That's how much God regards the things we say. He said, I was just joking. Now, take another joke. Don't joke with that. 
Now, that is from NAS translation. For by your words you shall be justified. By your words you shall be justified. And by your words you shall be condemned. That's what God will use to judge us at the end of everything. So while we are still here on planet Earth, somebody is opening his or her mouth and telling you the truth about himself or herself. And you want to walk past that. The reason is that you have an idea of what you think that person should be. But in reality, that's not who the person is. That is not how the person wants to live. You just assume because this is how much you are so lost in your desire. You wish it were like this. But that's not how it is. The person is who he is. And if the person will ever change, it won't be because of you. It will be because there is a jolt that may not be the fact that he or she is married to you. So, let me land this way. Nobody succeeds in marriage by luck. Now, luck in terms of, oh, I just saw him or her love at first sight and then oh there's chemistry and after that chemistry we started holding hands uh, and then you see i was making effort we kiss and all that we started sleeping together i can predict it will not last that so-called happiness is shortly it will not last for long that happiness is fake that happiness, you are just faking it because you know you are acting and uh, you can act so much so far. Even the people you see, you watch on the movies and you wish your marriage were like that. They, you know they are acting. You know they are acting. Many of them will finish their acting and they are still going to the court trying to settle their last marriages. Many that are acting have married more than eight times. Many have married more than that. Because this is not movie. This is not acting. It's not, somebody, somebody is not sitting there to direct you so that they finish the time and after that you collect your money and go. People get to know you as the actor or actress of that. No. This is life. It's not rehearsal. So what should we do? One, acknowledge that God has a blueprint for marriage. Don't try to do it your own way. Now, if God tells you, if God, if God tells you, apologize. Don't try to argue and say, I didn't do anything. Now, that's the wisdom of God. He said, but he is at fault. But God is telling you to apologize. He's not asking who was at fault. You are looking for who was at fault. If God wants to hold you responsible for everything you have done, you think you will survive? The wisdom of God, he is telling you, apologize to her. Tell her she is my wife. And so what? And so what? Incidentally, many of these men who do this have their bosses at work are women. You come back home, you disrespect your wife. I just wonder why. I really wonder why. So is it because the person or your wife got married to you, she doesn't deserve respect? And some women respect men outside more than their husbands. Let me tell you, he does not work for long. If he's a very understanding man and he sees how you disrespect him and you respect other men outside, treat them with decorum and, you know, you do things with, you follow protocol, you don't want to disrespect them or show any sign, but you talk to the man anyhow, treat him anyhow. You are not lucky. I don't think if you are lucky now, you won't be lucky for long. <laughs> so you see, the so-called luck in marriage, all oh, they talk about, oh, this is a marriage made in heaven. Find out from them. They are putting some work into it. They are doing things that is showing the other person, I respect you. 
that you are married to me does not mean you should lose your respect. In fact, that you are married to me means you should be more respected. That you are married to me does not mean you should be stifled. That you are married to me does not mean I should, I should change everything God has invested into you. That you are married to me means I should create the environment for you to shine like the star that you're meant to be. But that should not mean that I lose my respect for doing that. So it's not a matter of luck. It's a matter of observing both the written laws and the unwritten ones. What do I mean by unwritten laws? Well, if you study the Bible, you would discover that many of the so-called unwritten laws are already written, but they are written, you know, they are they're mentioned here and there. A man should see to it that he keeps the devil out of his garden. If you allow the devil a chance, he will come in. And one thing I found out about the devil is when he creeps, you allow him a chance to put a foot into your own house. He is coming there to ruin everything. The devil is coming there to take over and make sure he makes a mess of everything. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. The devil wants to ruin everything. But you see, like we keep saying, he doesn't just go around ruining every home. He doesn't go about ruining every family. He ruins the family that people give him a chance. Now, this has no regard for whether you are a preacher or not. If you are careless and you allow the devil a foothold, He's going to sow the seed of discord. He's going to make sure there's no respect. He's going to make sure that there's disregard for each other. He's going to make sure you enjoy taking your spouse for granted. The devil likes it when he sees a place where there's no order. Do you know the Bible calls the devil the lawless one? So you do things without observing the rules and the regulation. Wherever there is strife and envy, there's all kinds of evil work. So when you allow the devil a chance, he comes in there and sees that there's no respect for one another. The husband has no respect for the wife. The wife has no respect for them. The children talk anyhow. They feel like talking because they want to feel, they want to do like others are doing. So how is your home? How is your home in heaven on earth then? What's the difference between you? How have you escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust? You see, if we take the word of God and allow it to come up from the pages of the book and we live out our lives daily, observing the things that the word of God says for us to observe, you will discover that your life is going to be different. Now, don't try to change the word of God to say what you want it to say. But open your heart when you hear the word of God and you've heard the truth. Many times when these truths are preached, they don't sound nice to us because that's not what we want it to say. We want it to say what we would like and enjoy. It's not the word of God. The word of God sometimes will say something that is nice. The word of God will say sometimes things that don't sound nice to you. But if you want to be a child of God and you open up your spirit, your heart for the word of God to touch your heart and bring the change from within, not the external things. You know, you just do the external things that people would think that you are serious. Oh, you are a very committed believer who says so. It's God who judges us and he sees the motive, the intent of our heart. So marriage that is a matter of luck is that the people have decided to walk, put work into it. It's your lifetime work. See, when you have stopped, when you would have stopped uh, doing your career, you will still be married. That's how it's supposed to be. That is how it's supposed to be. One of the things I've observed that has left people in pains 
is that they are married into homes where they are not loved. They are married, you know, they are married to someone who doesn't care about them or used to and now has transferred that love to somebody else. Or some, some people do it in a very sad way. You marry this woman, when the children begin to come, you transfer the love you had for your wife to your children, man or woman. That is not right. You should love their mother, their father in such a way that they look forward to theirs. My children say, you know, um, you mean you love mom more than us? Of course. Of course. I love my wife more than all my children. He said, why? That's the way it is. That's the way it is. That's, the, uh, that's how it works. That's how it works. If I love any of my children more than my wife, I'm not serious. They should see how I love my wife and desire to have that kind of marriage. That's how it should be. It's not you pouring all, you now, you now spoil your children and discipline your spouse or control your spouse. No, it should be the other way. If you can spoil your spouse, if you can. Love is your love on him or her. It, it has to be a choice. You have to be deliberate about it. You don't, if you wait until you feel like, you won't do it. So, it could be a matter of luck. It depends on what you call luck. It is not a matter of luck because that thing you call luck doesn't exist. Where you just see somebody and he's so, made, so well prepared, kept for you, and you don't need to work on yourselves. You don't need, even if at the beginning, nothing, no challenge comes as you progress because your values will change. Take note, your values will change. Your looks will change. Your age will change. So many things will change on their own without you calling for them. So what you need to do is to catch up and overtake the, those changes. Improve on yourself. Work on yourself. Check your attitude. And be the kind of man or woman that your spouse will be honest to tell you. I like people to be nice to me, even when you are correcting. So don't bully me in the name of correction. I will not, I will not tolerate it. I don't. So point out the thing. You can come up across in form of a question. Have you thought about doing this or why did you do that? Then I can answer. Don't come and pronounce a judgment. I know why you are doing what you are doing. I know why you have done that. In fact, you've done this because of this. Did I tell you? Did you know? When you do that, you are trying to act a God. And God hasn't made you his representative in that sense. Praise God. So let's solve this problem once and for all. It's, it's work. Good marriage is work. But what you need to do is you need to enjoy the journey. Every time you have an opportunity to attend to your spouse, enjoy the journey. Who else would do it? Oh, I don't even want to go into some people living together and they don't make love to each other. Man is on his own. The woman is on, on her own. And they live there for months. <laughs> Are you sure it's marriage? If one of you is not well, is understood, but that should be clear to the other person. And you don't use marriage as a means of torturing and punishing your spouse. It's ungodly. Well, this is the conclusion. Open your heart unto God and love your spouse. Love your spouse. God will reward you for it. If you, if you maltreat your spouse, I may not be there, but God is there. God is seeing what you're doing. God is watching. He's seeing. Bible says because God saw that Jacob did not love Leah, but loved Rachel. 
He said, okay, Rachel, you have to hold on. Let me have a way of consoling this woman. So it's clear that he did not love that was giving birth to children. But did, did you hear Bible says that God saw he did not love. He didn't announce it in public. I don't love this woman. No, he was maltreating her. He was not showing her love, was just using her, making sure she produces children. She can, he can sleep with her, but didn't love her. Love your spouse. Love your spouse. It's godly. Man or woman. And nowadays I know some women are comfortable to maltreat their husband. I don't care. I don't care what you have. I don't care what you have. You don't, if you do not respect God, I do not care what you have. It, it doesn't concern me. But you know that one day, one day that thing you think you have will go to another person. One day, and God will always ask you, what did you do with the person I entrusted you with? Praise God. I think that the time is short. Well, um, leave your question below this. Leave your comment. If this has helped you, send it to your friends. But this is my conclusion. A good and lasting marriage can never be a thing of luck. It can only be a thing of luck if you give yourself to it. It's like saying a prepared person met with an opportunity and then the lock took place. That's how it should be. And every day we should seek to update ourselves. Seek to update yourself. Don't say, eh, I, I told you I married, I told you I love you when I married you. If I changed my mind, I would have also told you. No. I, I, I'm not perfect. I'm still learning. But I'm open to learn. Anything that is going to, anything godly that is going to help me, to show to my wife, you deserve the love of God through me. I'll do it. See, by so doing, I'm demonstrating to my son, you don't treat, you don't maltreat some other person's daughter. I'm also telling my daughters to expect that to happen to them. That's the statement I'm making. Everything we do, we are sending messages and signals to our environment. My prayer is that this word will help you, will bless you. I look forward to um, coming up with um, written materials that will help buttress these facts and expound more. There's more to say. Now, for those who are not yet married, you listen to this person and he's saying foul things. He's totally disregarding God or has no God in his thinking in his beliefs and you think after he or she is married to you this person will just change automatically you just lie to yourself because a good a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit and bible says that the things that are said are the fruit of what's in the heart the way the one clear way that people expose what they stand for is what comes out of their mouth if you bypass that and still go ahead and you get married to them, then you're already in. Ask God to grant you the wisdom of how to handle it. Don't try to dodge it. Don't try to abscond. Don't try to abdicate. Let God help you. It's now time for you to humble yourself. You couldn't do it at the beginning. Let's say you couldn't. I don't want to say you didn't want to. You couldn't do it at the beginning. You can seek the face of God. You can make amends. You, you can ask for God's mercy. And he will help you. That's where we end tonight. I want to believe that this has helped you. It had to be today. Valentine. This is Valentine's special. So if this has helped you, please send it to your friend. Put it on your wall so that those who hear this will be blessed also. My name remains Reverend Robert Tuffon. Um, for now, I'm still the senior pastor of uh, Amazing Grace Family Church here in the city of London, precisely West Drayton, UB7, 7BQ. And um, if you are anywhere near 
London in the United Kingdom. Find time to worship with us, share fellowship, and experience the power of love. God bless you and have a good night's rest. Thank you and bye for now.